Welcome back to Honesty Talk. Today's episode for me is a sore point and we've had a bit of a, <laughs> a pre-discussion, yeah. uh, Layinka, about this. Yes. Uh, we're talking about racism within the Muslim community. Now, Layinka, mm -hmm. do you want to share with the viewers your feelings about talking about this? See, I, I have a bit of a neutral stance when it comes to, not that I have a neutral stance to racism. I know it exists. And I guess because I have not had a particular race, like uh, um, encounter? encounter with racism in my local community or anything like that, I don't have a strong oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, because it's not been my experience. So I can say it exists. I can acknowledge that it's out there. I mean, yes, I had kids calling me chocolata in Egypt when I lived there, but th then I just saw it as, let me tell you about yourselves, tell you about yourselves and move on. It's not something that I took to heart, but I know it's there. I know that there are issues with, for instance, three black sisters having a show, mm. you know? Which we'll come to. Which we will come to, but it's not like, I, I don't feel like fuel in my belly when we're talking about racism, okay. you know? Uh, you know what that leads me to? Mm. That leads me to the point that does it, does it need to be our personal experience in order for us to feel passionate or to feel that it is a cause that needs to be addressed? And I'm not saying this for you. Mm. I'm talking about this in the wider context of the community because many people will kind of say a, a similar yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, it's not my problem. <laughs> it's not my problem. Mm. I don't experience it. I know it exists. Class, let's move on. Mm. For me, as you know, I don't do injustice. I don't like injustice and I can't keep quiet when it comes to injustice. Mm. So I'm very passionate particularly about this. Um, I have witnessed many times racism within the Muslim community from practicing people. See, I haven't. I have. Mm. And I think that's my thing because I haven't seen it, I haven't felt it. So it's just like, I know it's there, but I can't even, it's something that, you know, tangibly touch because of the fact that I haven't actually, I can't say, ah, oh, there you go. I know that for instance, when we have ads, the models, they are not people of color, for instance. I know that. Having said that, I will say that when I'm putting out material- Oh, it's coming out now. When I'm putting out material <laughs> for my work and mm. it's got a sister, I always tell my team, put a sister of color. Why? We're done. We're done Why? with the narrative that we're not seen. Because mm. it's true, we're not seen, sisters of color. We're not put out there as the model Muslim image. Mm -hmm. So even when you have documentaries about Muslims, we're not there, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that, it, that's what I'm saying, I know it exists, but I don't have this fire in my belly. I do like to do things that scraps the narrative and rewrites the narrative that's but good. i don't have that yeah you know like oh my god let's i wonder why i do i wonder well, why you tell us yeah, why I, do you I, I wonder why i do i think for me it's just it's just it's a major injustice it's a major injustice and i cannot stand the fact that we give a certain front and a certain persona that we are practicing you know mm. that we are this way you know, within the community, and yet, you know, we'll say to our daughters, 
come home, you know, come home with a proposal, just make sure it's not a black man. Mm, mm, just make mm, sure mm, it's not mm, a black mm, brother. Yeah? I Or, from our side, make sure it's not an Indian. Make sure it's not yeah. a Chi Chinese run. Make sure it's, yeah. like, we, we do versa. that too. Yeah. We do it too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that, I think for me, I don't know if it's because I embraced Islam, you know, I'm not naive. 20 years after becoming Muslim, I am not naive. You know, I have been awakened to the, the state of, <laughs> of, of what is happening within the Ummah. Mm. Um, but I, I, I still cannot grasp the concept that we are Muslims. The one religion that places people of different nationalities and colors on one plane and yet in 2019 we're still hearing that mm -hmm. we're still hearing you know oh uh, a white sister yeah yeah marry a white sister because she's easy huh mm. Mm. don't you dare bring a black brother home what yeah asians mm -mm. <laughs> two thousand <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's like in the corner. 2019, we're still doing this in the in the multicultural yeah. society that we live in. I mean, we live in London. You know, well, we li we're from London, right? Yeah. And we're still facing that. I mean, like Yinka, you shared with me that a sister contacted you. Mm -hmm. In fact, you want to, to mention what she said? Yeah, a sister I know um, contacted me. We were talking about HTT and she was like, I am so... She is half Pakistani, half Jamaican. So she's got two very different sides um, that she identifies with. And she said, I am so glad that we have three black sisters on the show. Half. And I said, well, and I said, I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alia isn't really whole, but she qualifies. But you know, it's it, three, and, three. and 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 mm. and she was like, where it's. I found it intriguing as someone who's half Asian to say, I'm so, I'm so glad there aren't any Asians like sisters, like for at the forefront of this because that's what we do. Yeah. Now let me mention, we didn't choose. You know, when when we got together, it wasn't a case we're doing yeah. this because we're all women no. of color. It's no. just because we know each other, we're friends, and we have this type of yeah. dialogue. This very but other people dialogue. might have seen it like that way. Yeah, that's you know, interesting. So other people might see it. Like I think she may have seen it initially as, oh wow, black sisters finally taken center stage. And she actually said, you know, you created your own table because you weren't being invited. And I was oh. just like, okay, well, yeah. well. Well, let's talk about that then, because mm -hmm. is it that, is it, and, and actually, if you see on like the social media, in the social media world, you will see that black Muslims are creating their own platforms, yes, creating their own uh, events, creating their own tables because they're tired of no longer being invited to it. So you had the black no Eid. being represented as well. You had the yeah. Black Tower Eid last, last year, and that was like, what, you're causing a division, da, 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 da. I was just like, Wait, we want to have something for ourselves. How, why is that a problem? Mm. And yes, you can see it as div divisive, you know, but you can also relate to the fact that we want a safe space where we can just jam and have, our, have a good time without being labeled as something else. And there's been quite a few things that have happened on, in the social media realm with regards to being black, being Muslim, and the labels that come with that. So. This is interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing so many things. You know, what, what the comment that came about um, the fact that all of us are people of color, I think that it comes with how you identify yourself. This is kind of like the thing that comes to the surface. And, and, and I, I was joking and saying like, what, I'm black? Bec it's not that I don't see my like skin tone, it's that do what is my initial label. If somebody were to describe me if i'm absent in the room and somebody's looking for me would they say it's a black sister who is this size and this height like the way i would describe myself my color doesn't jump to the front Thank i have you. many other things that i see personally see myself that i label myself in that way being black doesn't jump to mind as my first i like my identity as mm. my first label um the other thing was that what you're saying about the muslim ummah so there's a big distinction between culture and faith. And to be fair, you know, the practicing person 
what percentage of their decisions and lifestyle are actually based on the faith and what are still being carried over from culture. Now, when something like marriage comes to the front, obviously it's complex. People are about their culture. They're thinking about their child's lifestyle, in-laws, blah, blah, blah. There's cultural baggage. There's stereotypes. You know, if you mess with these people, you're going to have to deal with this. If you go with this side, you're going to have to face that. There's all of these kind of assumptions we have. Mm. So how many people are purely coming from an Islamic lifestyle 100% that you're sure that you're not going to get any cultural stain on the lifestyle? Mm. There's no pure like behavior or if you can find families like that it's so rare Mm. so when parents are doing this they're coming from a a place of protection coming from the outside as a revert you're looking at it in the textbook we're supposed to be equal we're supposed this is what the faith preaches but in reality now you've learned as you said in Mm. reality it's not black and white it's not cut dry like <laughs> excuse that excuse the pun oh, right? oh the mm. d- i didn't see that coming <laughs> um, but it's not straightforward in that way people it's such a complicated multifaceted thing see with marriage it's it's touchy with marriage because are the our parents saying don't marry the black guy don't marry the asian don't marry that because they want to be able to identify they want to be able to speak the same language they want to be able to eat the same food they want to be able to do those things or is it because because when we're when we are having these discussions you hear it's be often you hear it's because of those things mm. but i wonder if that's a mask for what is actually really deeply no, and no, no, like no. you are less than they are less than they're not for you they're not no no no, no. let me tell you something <laughs> Okay, let me tell you something, okay? They can say it's because language, culture barrier, I won't understand them. But really and truly, and these are some of the things that I have personally heard, the reason why I would not recommend you to marry a black brother is because all black brothers are thieves. They came, they came from a background of, of drug dealing. They... Uh, are really, really bad with their women. So, mm -mm. Mm. And this brother could be a black brother who has studied, who has a degree, who has a good job. And yet you present this brother to the family and all they will see is the stereotype, the stereotype of his color. Mm. I know someone who's that, who that's happened to. It was like, really? And he actually said, I can't believe we are in 2019 and this is still happening. Yeah. yeah. How did we, how are we still here? But it's when people are holding on to their c- cultural um, lineage thing that our line and our people mm-hmm. and our tribe mm-hmm. and we're pure and we're da 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 and they're still holding on to that. That's why you still have that perpetuated. Going yeah. back to this, I'll tell you a personal example. I was with a sister and the sister was basically purchasing a house. And the the person that she was purchasing a house from happened to be Nigerian. And she said, and she was extremely frustrated because he was, he, you know, he he wasn't responding to her calls and they wanted to put the self and so and so on. And she said, you know, I'm so frustrated. You know, you know what these these black men are like. She said that to you you, while you were there. She said that she know the conversation was just between her and myself. Mm. Obviously, not knowing my background. Oh. <laughs> so you know what I'm like in these types of situations. You're like, how I, are they exactly? No, the, 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 first, the, first, the first thing I said, the first thing I said was, you do realize you're speaking to someone whose father is Nigerian. <gasps> no, I didn't. You misunderstood what I meant, sister. No, no, I didn't. Shut I down. said, I said, sister, no, what you have said comes from a deep place of prejudice mm. and how you can carry that prejudice as a practicing Muslim, this is something you have to address. Mm. You know, for me, I, I felt really, to be quite frank, sickened, sickened by it. This is actually really interesting because what I was listening to this morning on the train here was from Brené Brown's um, Brave in the Wild. Uh, what wilderness Mm -hmm. and she was talking about prejudice and how we will say things like all of them are like this except for that one because I know that one Mm -hmm. so she said it's kind of like it's hard to be to to hate 
close up. Mm -hmm. So you know someone who's your neighbor and you love them and they're this, but they're different and you don't like those people who are different, mm -hmm. but you'll make a, an exception for your neighbor because they're your neighbor and yeah. you love them. Mm -hmm. And so that sister, she will know a black person who's okay and that she can trust, but she will still have the blanket that they're all that way. Mm. You know, they're all like this. Mm. And do you know what? Having this conversation, I know that, and I can recognize times when I have had prejudiced uh, thoughts and uh, maybe even said some things about a blanket nation of people. Mm. And yes, you're right. We do need to address it and we do need to check ourselves. First, we need to recognize that what we're doing is actually wrong. because. We're, we still are in the place where ju we're justifying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> How a person can justify their prejudice is beyond me, especially mm -hmm. when we are Muslims, when we have a religion, like I have said, that puts everyone on an equal plane. The only difference is your good deeds in the sight of Allah. Mm. So how you can justify your racism as a person that has submitted mm. to Allah I don't know. I I really cannot reconcile that. I cannot. Yeah, I think you know? I think it, it just like you're saying. I can also identify it in myself, like that when I think about certain, I associate certain groups with certain things. It's almost like what you heard. You drink it in the water. Like you're taught these things, like through you know, you just mm. drink it up, like mm. from around you. you don't Part know of where our it comes growth, from. though, Samaya, yeah. is addressing that. It's yeah. true. It's yeah. addressing that. It's saying to ourselves. It's being honest with ourselves and saying. This is, this is the prejudice that I have been raised with, or mm. this is the prejudice that I still have. Is that serving me well? And is it serving my community well by me yeah. holding on to that prejudice and, and potentially at a very unconscious level, passing that on to my children? It's true. It's true. I think one of the beautiful things about living in a like a heavily multicultural society, if you come from anywhere in the West, your community is going to be diverse by default. The Muslims who all come together as mm -hmm. Muslims and we're all from somewhere else. Mm. We're all from all these different places. So you grow up around people from everywhere. You've gone to university, you're with a people from all sorts of places and it kind of normalizes it. I think where it really is stark is when you come from a place where people are all the same. same. And then you kind of, it's us against everyone else. And we yeah. believe every other group to be like this, like that, like that, like that. Um, so being in this kind of environment makes it a lot easier. Since kids were younger, no? I, dis I, I understand your point. However, I, I disagree to a certain extent. And I'll tell you why. I was speaking to a sister who is a black sister. And we were having a discussion about her son and how she has to put in so much effort with her black son to make him feel valued as a black child living in a multicultural society what 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 yeah i mean what does she wh as in as in he is facing racism within his school mm. right. okay where there are black white asian but he is facing racism seven year old facing racism and how much how much work added work she needs to put in as his mum to ensure that he grows up as a secure confident black man mm. and that's within a multicultural society mm. in a in you know this is a muslim school this is a muslim that school. doesn't mean anything i'm sorry do, do you see so we have yeah, the multiculturalism sorry. you know we have uh, islam we're talking about this context this example that i just gave and yet this is what she has to do Mm -mm. It doesn't, it's deeply it doesn't make rooted. A it's yeah. deeply rooted. Yeah. Despite the fact that we have different nationalities and we're, you know, intermarrying and so forth, it's still we there. still believe that some are less than us and that we are better than some. It's arrogance. So that that goes yeah. back to arrogance, yeah. and we know that shaitan arrogance it stems has from that. No I'm better place. than him. Mm. He's created from earth. Yeah. I'm better. Yeah, it's it's something that has to be stamped out, and I. I mean, we see, you know, we see the black movement um, in kind of like the non-Muslim space, right? Um, and the struggles that they go through. <laughs> I don't know how we can stamp this out. I think as you were talking, you were talking about the black movement. Something that came to me, to mind for me was that in our quest to stamp it out, we have to be really careful because we could do the other, we could go the other way ourselves. In what sense? So, for instance, in wanting to eradicate racism as black Muslims, we could end up 
berating non-blacks and actually because oh they've been doing it to us for so long now it's our time to speak up and say that they're all trash mm. well that's that's do, that's, do you see, but that's do you see what i mean within because, itself, because that can it? that but then they could th there would be the justification that we have been having it dished to us so let's let's it's now time to dish it back that's and that's, as, where, that's coming as a victim right? right and that's what i'm saying that we have to be careful that in in our quest to eradicate that we are coming from a playing like a level field rather than we are like from here we want to get up there and put them down there yeah you're basically coming from a a, a, a low place yes. wanting to be at a high place and put everyone back down and put everyone that that's wrong yes. as muslims if we want to stamp it out we simply need to go back to the to the the simple fact that allah has created us from different tribes and nations to know one another to know one another mm. And that, you know what, the, the, if I want to get up there, I'm going to get up there with my deeds, mm -hmm. with my position with Allah, with how pleased he is with me. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm black, because I've, I've been the underdog and now I want to be mm -hmm. something. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. No, this yes. is wrong because yes. then you'll, you'll perceive everyone yeah. and else And I think it was important for us to say you. that because Absolutely. that is the other direction we can find ourselves going and in. And many, many yeah. take that. Yeah. Many take that direction. Yeah. No, within the community, it's, it's stripping it away to the simple fact that, you know what, we are just simply different. And we can only compete with the pleasure of Allah. We're all different, but we all bleed the same. Oh, yes. We're all different, but we are yes. the same. Biologically, we're the same. We have been created with the same functions yeah. inherently, right? So there isn't a one-up amongst any of us. No. Yes. SubhanAllah. Yes. Yeah. And I really, really hope that this episode initiates much discussion. Oh, yeah. I think it will. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really hope it does. And I hope that... First and foremost, b before we think about what we can do to stamp it out, that we inspect ourselves, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. with our own prejudices. Yeah. I mean, we've spoken about prejudice towards black people. I don't know if that's because, you know, we have black blood. Maybe that's why we've spoken about it. But racism exists towards Asians, towards whites, towards Chinese, you know, everything. Yeah. Um, but really, we need to inspect ourselves. Do we hold prejudices against people because of their color and if so how can we stand before allah with that mm. what can we do to change that within ourselves first before we start going out into society and stamping it out within the muslim Correct. community there we go yes. right yes. hashtag that <laughs> quote that one last point <laughs> yes I, um what you were talking about earlier representation in social media um, and I think this, I, I'm, not, I'm not privy to the name, so maybe this is the colorism aspect. So within a particular population, how people tend to prefer the European features through like the colonialism kind of thing. And this is, this is what you were saying about the ads. This is something that I see as prevalent, like, you know, the wedding photos, the before and after, the, that the goal is always to move in that direction. Yeah. And what that does to the young girls that are you know in their you know pre-teens and coming up who are looking at instagram and social media and seeing that i'm external to their population mm -hmm. like i'm not from that part of the world but i can see that 95 percent of the population don't even look like that mm -hmm. but their celebrities and role model figures are always look a certain way yeah. like this is the goal and those are the people who get booted up as, you know, as, as higher status than the average looking person whose features are different and color mm. is different within a single population. Mm. We need to have an episode on that. Mm. <laughs> mm. We need to have an episode on that. Wrapping up this episode on racism, mm. final thoughts very quickly. What you said, inspecting ourselves and, and uh, addressing, because like you were saying to mask it with all of these explanations and have mm. like this is actually my reason it's just because of this is is a cop out yeah honesty yeah. is key yeah being really honest with ourselves about what we're thinking and feeling yes. and how that is manifesting yeah for me it's imagining that you are standing in front of allah on the day of judgment and how you will be able to justify the decisions and the choices you took and the way you treated people because of their color. I think if we can be humble enough to imagine that and to really be honest with ourselves as to what we would say, that's a starting point, inshallah. Okay, so this wraps up the episode on racism. Please do visit us on Facebook, comment, share. I'm sure this is gonna initiate a lot of discussion, which is great because this is what Honesty Talk is about. 
if you have been affected by racism within the Muslim community, we have a couple of links of organizations that can support you, inshallah. See you at the next episode. When I'm in my moments of ease, yeah, and, and, I'm, and I'm worshipping Allah and I'm striving as a Muslim, it's nice, it's good, it's enjoyable, but the real growth in my faith and the real growth in my relationship with Allah has not come from moments of ease for me. When you start learning knowledge in the deen and taking classes, you start filling up on a lot of information and you know a lot. Then, you know, you've done the coursework, it's lecture and lab, now it's time to work what you know. And you get put in situations where you need to call on what you've been taught. But I made a specific dua, Allah give me a healthy child. And then he gave me a child who has the worst form of specific disease. And I'm just like, I remember when, I was, when, when we were told about this and I looked up to the heavens and I said, you've got a plan, you've got a plan and I accept it. Yeah.